Hello and welcome to a game of Dota 2 where we see a tree and protector and an OD but before we're gonna jump ourselves into the draft I'm gonna sell, tell you why you are seeing this match. We are seeing this match because this is a best of three. We are in the AMD Premier League Season 2. We are at the round of 16 so that means that the winner of this best of three will move on to the quarterfinals. It is a single elimination bracket with best out of threes. We are seeing Zenith, the invited team, and Neolution G7, the team that made it through the regional qualifiers to be here. And they are actually uh, trying to force out a third game before Zenith makes it to 2-0. And I am not by myself. I'm here with music. Music is providing me with stats or providing us with stats because I'm not by myself in terms of voice either. You'll also hear Skim, who is my co-caster for today. Skim, welcome back. Thanks for having me once more. And this is Quantic Gaming we're playing or we're seeing. Well, OD oh, Treant. That's, that's Goblax Draft, basically. But... Uh, then again, the Asians do play it a bit differently, and even Quantic um, doesn't use it that often, so yeah. Um, Zenith going with some sort of standard, I want to say, pick up for them the Wisp or Io and the Darkseer. Um, two of their, well, if they can pick them up, they are definitely always going to pick them up. Uh, Ban so far, Nyx Assassin, Visage, and Weaver from Zenith's side, and uh, CK. Sadly, taken out by G7. Yep, I don't think Zenith was gonna go for that though. They are more of, um, you know, everybody expects this, so we go for something else kind of team. Yeah, they like to couple up the Wisp with the Slark, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a Slark pick up at this point. Yeah, Ice Ice Ice, of course, uh, plays that one, I believe. Uh, very enjoyable to watch. But yeah, the Treant already there and, and the OD, so that makes it a little diff more difficult to gank someone, however, the Slark, the way that his uh, that his pounds work, or that his Dark Pact actually works, I should say, you know, he does instances of damage, so... One Dark Pact in the Living Armor is already gone. Like, it blocks some damage, but it's not gonna last for a very, much, for a very long time, and it's not gonna heal you up, that's for sure. We've got a Gyrocopter band out as the last one for Neolution, and a Doom and the Weaver were the ones for Zenith to be removed. Let's see what what G7 is uh, going for right now because, well, there's plenty of opportunities, but they already know that they're up against an IO means that they might have to focus a little bit more on team fights because they're gonna get forced into team fights because they can't really go out by themselves because then you get ganked up by the IO and whoever uh, combines with him. So team fight heroes are kind of needed. They have a mid laner and they need to carry an off lane and another support. We have a Shadow Demon still in the pool, and the Rubik. Yeah, I think there are quite a few pick up, uh, pickups. I think Rubik makes sense, but uh, against a Wisp, they might even consider something like a Disruptor. Um, has great synergy with OD as well. Just, well, if you get a good Static Field Up and a good uh, Disruptor Ultimate, not sure what it's called right now, uh, Static Storm, oh yeah. Uh, and drop the OD Ultimate on top of that, that's a huge amount of damage. But G7, go with the Life Stealer. Some uh, really solid carry so far. So, going for more of a safe pickup, I want to say, but... Zenith, can you ever play safe against them? You're getting punished regardless, whichever... Like, you, you can play safe against them, you can try, but they'll force you to fight anyway. So you better, you know, the you, you should fight fire with fire. Go for something that can fight. If Zenith want, the, want a fight, well, they can get it and then just go for aggression. I like Lifestealer. They need something more though, maybe a bit more mid-game. We saw them having the OD in the previous game and I, I was not convinced by Leo's performance on that one. So they need to make a change there, either more supports rotating to make sure that they actually win that lane. Or maybe being up against a different hero, but they picked an OD so early that Zenith can just, you know, pick up whatever they want to against it. And knowing that they're going to be up against an OD, they're not going to be sad about that at all. Like maybe a Beastmaster again already could be happening. And of course Beastmaster also very strong against a life stealer because that roar, regardless if you're raged or not, is gonna hurt or at least it's gonna stun you. Yeah, um, we saw that in the last game. An OD is not really the best carry to make a comeback with or the best hero to make a comeback with because he's fe really fallen behind quite quickly. Yeah. Um, oh. And the Razor. Actually, Neolution banned out the Razor in the previous game. They banned out the Razor and the life stealer. The one, the two heroes that they didn't want to have up against the OD, because Razor wins from OD mid already. And if they already won mid in the previous game with a hero that they, you know, weren't supposed to win mid on, imagine what they can do if they have someone that actually is supposed to win against the Razor, right? Yeah. 
This should be this is solid pickup so far for Zenith and the razor works well against OD and Life Steal, so this is a really good pickup for them right now. Um picking up the Wisp of course, generally as you wanna see uh you expect something to see like some big Wisp combo and uh, that's why G seven banned out the CK, but Zenith, one of those teams they don't really need to have those Wisp combos. They just play Wisp as a really good support and they don't rely on that relocate um to make something happen and Looking at the lineup right now, they're looking really solid. Yeah, of course, once again, you can vote in the Twitch chat, exclamation mark vote, and then either G7 with a capital G, I believe, or Zenith. Case sensitive, so make it a capital Z. Exclamation mark vote, and then your team name. That's uh, what you can do in the Twitch chat, unfortunately, not in the Dota TV chat. As uh, people that are watching in Twitch chat, you can watch this in Dota TV if you buy a ticket. Ticket is actually very cheap, I believe, so you can definitely check that out. You should. And there's, yeah, you should. There's tons of amazing teams, talented, experienced. There's tons of amazing games and um, a lot of talented casters as well. So yep. I would definitely check that one out. A lot of different casters for all games, by the way. As I already told at the start of this match, or start, well, actually before the match started, there is a lot of different English casters as well. So make sure you give everybody a little bit of love. As the clockwork gets picked up by, by G7. It's nice. There's not really. A, I, I say this, and I know that I said this before today, because Clockwork doesn't really have that big of a synergy together with anything else apart from the infested life stealer, and you can hook into something. But the last time I said that, the team that I said didn't have any synergy was the team that ended up winning. So who knows? Maybe this is a good thing for G7. Yeah, maybe it is. Uh, the Clockwork in general, once again, you don't really want to fall behind on him because. Even one good hookshot isn't enough to make a game, but um, it's still a solid pickup, I guess. He could technically be played as a support, but should be an offlaner because so far they their only support is the tree end, and that's kind of weak. And Zenith, I'm calling an Ursa right now. I'm just saying it. I'm calling an Ursa. If they go for an Ursa, they can actually have a Roshan level 1, even though they're Radiant. Oh, and there's the Ursa ban. Nice ban. Uh, yeah. Too bad. Because the Venomanta Ursa is a really po well, a popular pickup, but it's a really good combo. There, it's really tough to run away from that. Like, there's two slows if uh, Ursa gets a bit of levels. You have the Gale, and I mean, Ursa just kills you. No matter if you're a life stealer, Ursa is actually one of the heroes that can go toe to toe with the life stealer in, in a man fight and live. Yeah, especially if there's a Wisp just backing you up with the tether. So. Yeah. It's too bad for Zenith, though. I'm, again, I'm guessing they would have picked up the Ursa, but I'm not getting it this time around. Nope. It is the Shadow Demon that was the last ban for uh, Zenith. So the Jakiro is the support that G7 goes for. You've got, of course, the Cogs. You can land a nice Ice Path over the top of that Macropire. The potential is there. We just have to see how it works out. G7, their main concern right now is surviving the lanes. Because we already, you already said, OD, not really a hero that is easy to come back with. If you are behind on the laning stage, he's not the hero that's going to be carrying you back into the game. Clockwork could be one of those heroes, but only if he has a... Well, he doesn't need to win his lane, but he, she can't lose it. So lanes are very important for Neolution uh, G7. And then they are in the mid game where they're up against an Io and a Phantom Assassin. So Zenith taking the page out of Alliance's book and uh, will be running the PA uh, on, uh, on Ice 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 this game. Again, it's quite nice because her physical damage output is really important to have against a hero like a life stealer. Um, with the rage, of course, he's magic immune, but um, Zenith actually has a decent amount of physical damage with the razor once he's stolen enough damage, and of course the PA now. So um, Zenith, they have a good. M they can play really aggressive in the mid game, but also can really fall back on the PA in the late game. So the solid lineup so far. Whereas G7, it really feels like they need to have a good early game. Yeah, let's see who is uh, playing what here, as we have Leo, the OD, on the side of G7. Will be uh, taken on the mid-roll, gets pulled a couple of uh, regions and going for the nil talisman first. I mean, he needs that extra bit of help because he's going to have a hard time in that mid lane regardless. Kenji will be on the clockwork, taking on the suicide lane solo. We've got VR Cat playing the Jakiro. It will be Shoti playing the life sealer. Goes for open wounds first, already. That's interesting because, well... Because there's no really a setup for him to go on. For him to get his open wounds going. But 
Maybe he just wants to level it really fast to make sure that he gets the range on it. We've got Kali playing the train protector and that's I believe the last one there as we might have some action already. Nope. Can't find it. Can't find it. VR Cat flying back to his tier 2. So I'll leave Zenith for you to introduce. Yeah, it is XY on the solo docks here. I think this is the second time in a row. Yeah, he played yeah. the Yeah, he played the docks here in the last game as well. He's going to be on this off lane by himself. Should manage himself quite well. On the support role it is Ice on the Wisp. Uh, Freedom playing the Venomancer. In the mid it will be Yamate on the Razor, I believe. Yeah, he's heading towards the creep camp. Yep. He actually went boots first. Interesting. Begins. And on the PA it is Ice Ice Ice. Yeah, one thing that I like about boots first on Razor I mean, nothing really breaks Static Link, apart from uh, men. So, no S for imprisonment will save you there. So, the one thing that the Razor, or sorry, that the OD will try to do once he has himself that S for imprisonment on there, is try to run. So, if the Razor is faster already, that's going to be giving him, uh, or going to be giving Leo, rather, a harder time there. As it looks like there's already going to be some support freedom hanging around with the Gale. They don't see Leo. They know there was a rune though, and they know that he has to be there somewhere, that he's not gonna let that lane go for free. Here comes the Gale, more slows, so even Boo's not really all that needed. This is gonna be Leo already taking a ton of damage. Is it gonna be first blood though? No, it's not. He Did you see that, the big armor? Yeah. <laughs> Poor train. Ah, in the meantime though, oh, XY, really close to dying. XY? Pops itself though. Oh, yeah, he's fine. Oh my god, that living armor. You can hit it on the f on the ground and it will go to the nearest target, but towers have priority over heroes, actually, if you click it too close to a tower. Oh, I didn't know that, but yeah, that was really unfortunate. Um, lucky for him, it really... Oh. Wow. That's a kill that so shouldn't have happened. That's a solo kill for a clockwork. That's... misplay by Ice. Can't call it any other way. He's back in the lane, though, but... Got harassed way too much by that clockwork, and with the battery assault, that's a kill. Yeah, and the most crucial part about this is actually that um, the pull was completely disrupted by that, and the lane will push now, so Kenshi will Ooh, Oh, they get a gale, gale off him, though. Goes for the battery assault still. We'll be able to shut down Ice a little bit with it, but I don't think it's going to help that much. Is there going to be enough damage is the question. Ice actually can't get the hits in. Maybe now he can. Living armor will help out, and clockwork will be safe. Nice battery assault. Nice save. And G7, with that first blood, I think they can count themselves very lucky. Yeah, and uh, now, again, the lane will be pushing in. Kanji will get a ton of XP. He's sitting on level 3 already because of that first blood. Will most likely hit level 4, maybe even level 4. Uh, okay, he gets zoned out by the Venomancer, so... Still quite nice for him. And Ice, Ice he really has to be careful. And that IO is uh, very low. And flares hurt him quite a lot. He does have Tango sticking though, so that helps. In the meantime, Leo is still safe in terms of he hasn't died yet, but his last hits, it is 4 to 0 with the Amate sitting on 12 to 5. It is really sad. He can't win this lane without help of the supports, and the supports are doing things top that, I mean, this is debatable. Of course, this is not the best roaming combination to begin with, so Tree will probably not roam, but Jakiro can at least maybe sit behind the OD and help out. Maybe, you know, take some of the heat of the Astro imprisonments. That wouldn't be or that wouldn't be bad. Yeah, I think they could actually rotate once the tree hits maybe level two or level three. Um I think a leech seed is actually nice to have. It has a slow and it takes away HP and gives you uh, HP in return, so maybe even be able to dive. And of course Astro Imprisonment can set up ice path, but um looks like they just want to play it safe and farm up on the life sealer. They put priority on him. Um, they did zone out XY out of the lane for quite some time. He now only rotates back in. He has been in the jungle for the past one minute or two, so... Yeah. He did get level 3 in there, so he's gonna have that level 2 iron shell. Will be uh, quite painful, especially to VR Cat, who uh, is actually going for a bit here. They might be able to get him, the open wounds is there! There is still a surge though, that should be helping him getting away. He dodges the ice path and will be able to stay alive. Living armor keeps uh, Jakiro up as well, by the way, so that will be good for him. Radiance bottom tower is under but attack. Nice attempt. They're showing a lot more teeth than they did in the previous game. Yeah, and XY, oh, he might have overestimated his welcome. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, he... Ice path is there, the surge is on cooldown, the open wounds is there as well. This should be another kill going the way of G7. And the Treant ends up getting it with the Leech Seed. So that's a good kill for G7. Their second kill, as we have got 22% uh, in favor of G7. 
I respect you, I salute you. So far, you're doing good. 78% for Zenith though, I mean that's his fan favorite, that is the favorite for the series to begin with. Even one of the ser favorites to take the whole thing, but uh, we'll see how far they get if they actually make it through this first. But so far, this is not really working out too well for them, even though they're not, they're not really losing uh, by any stretch. I mean they're getting farm up on every one of their heroes. Including the Dark Sea, even though not as much as you otherwise want to. And the mid game is going to be uh, the one where they can show their strength, but they're not really dominating the lanes as much as I thought they might be. Yeah, mid lane is a complete disaster though for G7. I mean, look at the level difference. Yamate is level 6, Leo almost hitting level 5. So, um, it's not looking good for them. I mean, 27 to 20, this is total domination by Yamate. Oh, that's why a lot of trouble again. Surges himself away. So we're gonna get slowed a little bit. In comes the light leech sheet as well, and that might be able to get a kill here. One hit needed from Kelly, and that's indeed the case. Jakiro's ice pass takes the kill in the end. But another kill going the way of an illusion. And I mean this is just uh, just Leo then with losing his lane real hard. Clockwork wasn't expected to to win his lane and he got a first blood. That's already more than you would have expected to have. But Leo is indeed, like you pointed out, I mean he is he is just flat out losing it. Even though yeah, he doesn't die, but yeah. Yeah, that's probably that would only be the icing on the cake because this lane probably can't get any worse if he doesn't die. Um, it's just yeah. Even last nice. game, exactly. I mean, even last game he basically had nothing and he still was struggling, but he's even getting less now. <laughs> Imagine that. And we already said at the start, OD is not really a hero that is easy to come back with, purely because he needs that intellect to. To be able to, to, to do something, to be able to stay ahead. In the meantime, the haste up on IO. He looked to maybe try to make something happen here on the bottom lane, but ended up not able to go. Didn't have the vision. It is nighttime now as well, so it's tougher to see your opponent. He is uh, further away. And the Yamate forces Leo away again because he can. Six last hits though. Leo. Oh, here comes the IO with the haste rune. Nah, just showing himself. Nothing else. Just intimidating. Intimidating indeed. In the meantime, the levels of the supports, it is the uh, the G7 team that is doing slightly better in that accord. I mean, we've got a level 5 on the Jakiro and the tree is level 4, while there's level 3 and 4 on Zenith. So, one level ahead respectively on the side of G7. And that's of course because of the kills on the top lane mostly. And because, basically, VR Cat and Kali have not been rotating, have not been trying anything, have just been taking some jungle creeps as well. And uh, just having an overall okay lane here, helping this Lifestealer from. They do take a lot of experience on the lane as well, though. Because Lifestealer is only level 5, while the PA is level 7. Yeah, they're really sticking around a lot. I'm not sure why, because they could be doing a lot more efficiently by just pulling and stacking and farming up themselves. But um, they're really not steady farming, uh, static farming this lane as they could be. Um, I mean, teams like Team Liquid, I like to use them ex as an example, because they do it really well. Just keeping... The lane, uh, well, just Ooh. back there and farming on three. We are gonna see Kenji in a ton of trouble. The tether is there. There was already one crit. That's a second one, and that's a kill. Going the way of ice. The cogs are still there. In comes Jakiro. Lands a dual breath. Ice path misses, though. And that's gonna be uh, giving ice maybe the opportunity to go in instead. It's fairly low on oh. HP. Does have a ring of health. They will be able to pick up ice. That's just a bit poor movement from him. Tower too strong, I guess. Well, poor movement really or was. just tower too strong. Oh, it's too strong. They were just sticking around too long and there was no creep to tank the tower. Um, in the meantime though, XY is being engaged on, on the top lane. Yeah, the lead sheet is there. There's, he doesn't have mana for a surge actually and he'll end up going down. He went for he went for the, the, the soul ring to try and make something happen but not able to do it. In the meantime, Jakiro able to deny a tower. G7, they're doing, I mean apart from the middle lane where they're getting destroyed, they're doing really well in the other two lanes. Yeah, they are. Um, yeah, the top lane, of course. I mean, I did say that they could do better, but they're still doing quite well for themselves. Yeah. Especially the life stealer. He has drums now. Um, I like this item a lot. Oh, Help shot in. Oh. They go for Yamate here, and they will be able to kill him off as well. Nicely done, and OD gets himself a kill with that. Gets himself a level with that, I believe, as well. So, finally able to get back. I mean, it will take a while before he is caught up, but it's a start. It's the start. Yeah, he Definitely. He basically got two levels out of this, actually. Um, he's now level seven, almost seven and a half, actually, and um, he really needed that rotation from Clockwork. 
Yeah, in comes uh, the Clockwork back on the bottom lane, or at least continues to farm there. Jakira still hanging around here. Looks like we have got Ice 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 just being uh, very careful, though. He's actually waiting for the lane to come back to his tower before he goes to farm again. He's been farming really well, but he is still behind on net worth compared to the Life Stealer. And the sole reason for that is that Life Stealer has been involved in those kills. And XY is back yeah. on the top lane. This time there's no supports around the uh, life stealer though. And that's going to be something that Yamate is trying to make advantage of. The infest out is there. There's a lot of damage being drained so they can't counter initiate. But they also can't kill off the life stealer. That's good. I'm just wondering. Um, looking at the life stealer right now. He's dealing 86 damage minus 137. Yes. How do you deal minus damage? I you mean, are you, you, give, you, are you giving him HP back? No, or? you just don't do not do damage. Yeah, but it really looks like, yeah. But still, 140 damage stolen, that's quite a lot. If they had engaged there, I think life still would have dropped very soon, but yeah. well, we of course the TP's are almost there. Yep, they're gonna relocate mid, they're gonna go for the OD. Leo It's gonna be the target, drops an Eclipse, but you can't drop an Eclipse when you're so behind on levels. It's a level 9 PA. She's got 20, sorry, she's le she, yeah, this is level 9, she's got 25 intellect, uh, in the meantime XY does a uh, chase around, they were able to pick up the Razor by the way, that's a nice one, but yeah, the OD only has, uh, or actually OD is still has more intellect, but still not enough. Yeah, and it's definitely not enough, and uh, uh, Razor, in the meantime, on the top lane, stuck around for too long. Not sure why. They saw that there were at least three heroes on top, yeah. and not sure what he was doing there, but yeah. Kenji looks like he's going to pick up drums as well. Not so sure about that one. No, he looks to be going for it indeed. I don't think you can stop him. Oh, never mind. You ah. can. Going for the blade mail. Yeah. There goes the aesthetic link. Yamate chasing down that life sealer. He's got a ton of extra damage and he was looking to use it. Nice overgrowth though, and Yamate, he can't use it at all. Macropire is bad for you. He dies in it. It is XY that's gonna get chased down right now. He still has a surge though, and should be able to make it out okay unless he gets hit by an ice path, which he's able to dodge. Nice dodge. Yeah, overly aggressive by Yamate. I think this is like the third time he tries to dive this T1 tower. Just with him and XY. I mean, diving the tower is not the problem, but doing it with just two heroes. At least relocate the wisp in. Yep. I mean, I mean that's your only disable. Yeah, the tether. exactly. You don't have any so... other disable. You've only got slows, and you like next to slows. You've got extra speed on the razor. Oh, X Y. Again, he should be dead. Open wounds are there. The surge will end soon. Here comes a relocate though. They're trying to save his life. Nice cogs. <laughs> Kenji, I don't think that's going to be helping out your team all that much. It's still going to be Io that dies first. And then Jakiro lives. Ice, Ice, Ice and XY on the run. Now there's no Ice Path anymore. And in comes Yamate. There will be a Static Link up on Shoti. He's infesting, making sure that he can stay alive. But with that, he's letting this Static Link go on forever. Kenji will be able to TP out. Trayon was the only one that ended up dying. Could have been worse. It definitely could have been. Oh, and, uh, and they might actually. It, 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 this it would be worse. They will lose their life seater, and that's worse for sure. That's not worth it. Weird cogs. It's really easy. <laughs> Those cogs really hurt them a lot. They could have gotten a kill on PA and Dox here. Um, would have been a triple kill basically, but the cogs just trapped everyone from G7 in. Yeah. Kenji, he is a traitor. He is thinking it's traitor mode. Yeah, if, if XY actually had a wall there, that could have been a big turnaround, but. Of, of course, level 9, you don't usually skill the wall just yet, but um, could have been a turnaround. Still was really nice, a TP rotation coming out, and oh, that's just... What? Mass disconnection. Well, not from us. We're fine. Actually, music disconnected, so... Okay, no stats, people. I'm no sure stats. you'll live. You'll be back. You'll be back. I can't say that. Dyer's you probably can say that better, because you're German. Attack. What? We'll be back? I'll be back. Well, I'll be back. But then he will be back because it's not I. Nice vacuum out of the cogs from XY. But he does still die on the top lane. Flare coming in from Kenji, level 4. Too strong. Yep. And he's sticking around on the top lane for so long. And he, he gave keeps away dying. four kills. Exactly, four kills. That's quite a lot. Yes, it is. In the meantime, they're still nicely farmed up PA though. And she is now highest level on the, or highest net worth on the map rather. In terms of levels, she's actually highest level as well. Quite high level. She is level 11 and the highest level on G7 is actually the OD that was doing so bad. He is level 9. 
So that's that's a big difference. Um, in comes the IO right G7. Gonna get slowed here and will indeed drop. No hope for him. Living armor, no tree. Had it on cooldown. He used it on uh, on the Jakiro because Jakiro needed it. More important than OD. Yes, I, um, I think OD would have probably died anyways. Yeah, I think so too. He did get to buy his mech beforehand, so that was really lucky for him. Yeah. So he didn't lose any gold. That's gonna be good for his team as well, because I mean they want to fight apparently, and they have been fighting. But they're starting to lose their control that they just got with having the control of their heroes that, that they normally bring. But the mechanism can help that out again. Yeah, definitely. And uh, it's really important to have that in big team fights. Uh, there's tons of damage coming out. Um, once Ice 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 gets his uh, Battle Fury and starts cleaving crits, getting a mech up is really nice. And of course against Vacuum and against Razor as well. Let's see what Razor actually builds in this game. I mean, yes, was it yesterday? Yeah, it was where... yesterday. We yeah. saw three Razors, three Agadim Scepters, and two Refresh Orbs, I believe. Yeah, it's something about that, so yeah. Looking forward to that, but I doubt. I think Yamate is going for a more carry-ish build with damage and probably picking up a BKB next. You're saying I have the Storm is not damage? Yeah, well, Radiant that's true, but I think more like right-click damage. Perhaps. We have a smoke up by the way, Yamate and Freedom roaming top, looking to help the Darkseer again. Let's see what they can do with it. We do have an invisible tree. We'll be able to scout things out and actually the rotation comes back to middle. Leo, the target, and relocating as well for the Jakiro. And that's gonna be a one Astro imprisonment. Jakiro getting stunned up for a little while. In comes a TP, overgrowth, still hits upon ice, hook shot in. And that's gonna be a jump forward from Ice into the cogs. Wants to take down Kenji, can't get it done because it get relocated first. They do take down the Venomancer, and that's the only kill that happens. Nice Venomosi though. It does force everybody back. Almost kills of Leo. Uh, because he still also had the uh, right click ticking, but uh, in the end, let's manage to get back into the base. And Shoti in the meantime takes down Razor. Um, within fast damage as well, so. That's insane. That's, yeah. I mean, that was a gank orchestrated by Zenith, and they looked very good relocated and everything. Ice was lucky to be relocated out of there because standing in fire is bad, and, you know, he got removed from the flames, so it's good. But yeah, that is, uh, that is the state of this game. G7 doing really well. They're not ahead in gold, though, because that's in favor of Zenith still. 2k only, 1k experience in favor of Zenith, but these differences really don't mean much. There's only one tower down, it's on the side of G7. So the moment that G7 starts taking t down towers, they'll be uh, getting ahead on gold. Yeah, and uh, this last team fight, if it hadn't been for the mech, OD would have dropped rather quickly, and I think the Jakiro as well, so... Yeah, that definitely saved him. Uh, Nyx, or Lysila, looking to buy a Shadow Blade. Interesting. Interesting pickup, interesting pickup. But I think it's quite good, he's ganking a lot, um, and it's going to... Give him a lot more mobility oh, as well. They're so. going for the Dark Sea again. Once more. Hello. Open wounds? No, he's waiting for the surge to happen. There's the open wounds. Now he'll get slowed when the surge is over. And no ice path will happen, but anyway, they're not going to try and chase that. Not past tier ones. There could be teleports in. They don't want to risk it. Yeah, and rightfully so. They don't want, really want to uh, commit to this. Not like Zenith, who just dives every tower. And oh, mid lane. They could go for Yamate, actually. He has a hookshot ready, but... Doesn't nah. want to risk it. That's a blade mill ready up on Kenji. Next time he gets stuck inside cogs with ice, ice is gonna be sad that he hasn't finished his BKB yet. He does have his Battle Fury, though, and that will help. His overclub is in the, in the stash, so that will be... Oh, oh missed hookshot. That will be uh, his next item, so the BKB still will be there. Yeah, his farm in general looks quite good. I mean, he's sitting on 8k net worth. Um, and this farm will be getting a lot better now with the Battle Fury. Yeah, for sure. Especially if, like, if you can imagine a team fight, you can farm heroes then. If there's, because we've seen Kenji going for debatable cogs before. So if yeah. he hooks in, if he cogs in his entire team, in comes PA, that's gonna be a very happy PA. And even if there is no cogs, there's still the vacuum to help out. Yes. From the docks here, so. I'm looking forward for a Rampage Cleave. Yeah, let's see. Ice Path, it's a Payamate. Can they take it down? I have the Storm comes in to help out. They want to have the Jakiro though. Or actually, are they just using it to get away? He just used it to get away with the Surge and the Face Boots. 
Relocate came in as well. Ice path misses. Ice gets killed off. Uh, the other ice, ice, ice manages to uh, jump himself to neutrals and should be able to get himself out. TP's out back bottom wants to continue farming, but another relocated or relocate gank failed by Zenith. That's the second time. Yeah, a bit of a miscommunication. I mean, um, at first it looked like XY and uh, Yamate actually wanted to engage, yep. but then they decided not to, and then and then the others came in. Exactly. So kind of undecided uh, indecisive whether to engage or not and in the end was definitely smarter to not engage but they had to drop the wisp for that yeah in the meantime maybe maybe g7 finally take some structural advantages in this game they haven't taken it down the tower just yet and it looks like we also have yamate already here to try and make sure that it doesn't happen still but he has to be careful from the side here comes the dark sphere it's got that mechanism, it's got that wall up as well. Looks like we're gonna see Zenith wanting to fight again. I'm not sure if that's the right call, but we'll see if it works out. There is an overgrowth again. Everything is up. Shadowblade is in the stash of Shoti. You'll get it with the courier right now. And it looks like they're not even gonna go in just yet. We even have got Kenji roaming around and going back into the forest and back to the mid lane even. You of course can always hookshot in from a range, but uh, doesn't have a TP scroll to get back to the tier 1 faster. Tier one top, that is. But it's really hard to push in against Venomancer with maxed uh, Serpent Wards, yes. it's, uh, or Plague Wards, Plague Wards. Um, they're really annoying to push up against, and the Razor, of course, has the Plasma Field as well. So they do have good counter push. And yeah, you can see already that Neo AS is just tipping down to get Ice Ice Ice. Oh, nice, nice tether overcome. though, he can relocate this, and he does. Bottom tower is under attack. You can even Blink Strike out of that, but. The relocate will still be uh, there. They might think about coming back. In the meantime, Razor goes down to the top lane. As for Imprisonment, holds KY or, or holds XY in there. Looks to be uh, going down as well, though. Does have another search right now. I'm not sure if it works out. Nope, it doesn't. That's another kill. Jakiro goes down to the top lane because Wisp and uh, Ice came back. They want to go for the tree as well. And they can't see him, though. And that's trouble. They had a, yeah, they they had a sentry ward as first, but... They do have a gem, but it's somewhere... Where is it now? Someone bought a gem, I know it. Oh, it's in the career. Ah. And now it's on freedom. There we go. Well, kills all over the board, going in favor of G7 still. They might have lost to Jakiro bottom, but they did get a razor in return. The only downside is that it was actually Ice that was involved in that kill on the bottom lane. Two Ices, even. And that's... Kinda... You know, he is the one hero that they actually should try to shut down most. Yeah, they're constantly shutting down Docs here and Razor, but Ice basically remains untouched. Um, and he's looking really good. He's actually 2k gold ahead of the Lifestealer. Ha we'll have his BKB in about 100 gold, and once that is up, I think they can take team fights even better because aside from um, the Lifestealer, there's not much damage coming out from G7. No, not at all. The Lifestealer is all that they have right now. They do have the Shadow Blade offering some extra damage on the initial hit, which is great. They have the initiation power with the hookshot and the infested life stealer. Also great. Their OD is not really able to get any damage out just yet though. He needs more. He has got the four staff and the mechanism, but he just needs more. It's very simple. And other than that, like if they are able to shut down the life stealer, like imagine a big fight, even with a shutdown Yamate, if he gets a static link off for a long time upon Show T. Then he won't be able to do any damage, and where's the damage going to come from then? It's going to be very tough for uh, for G7 in late game to actually still fight, regardless of how much they shut down that Razor, purely because they let Ice 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 army freely. Who now yeah, has a I agree. I agree. But to be fair, Leo is actually doing quite well for himself now. I mean, he used to be like two levels behind Yamate and at least 2k gold behind, but now he's actually ahead. So um, Yamate's constant suicide missions kind of put him behind. But as you pointed out, the Razor is really good. He's just turning the strength of your enemy against them, uh, against them uh, by stealing the lifestyle damage. So Yamate definitely uh, can still make an impact in this game. Yeah, we have a smoke up lane. for uh, G7. Yeah, they're going top. They're going for surprise X Y again. Let's see if we can get a hook shot in. Be and then they don't see it coming. So oh, there's the Astro imprisonment that's gonna start things off. Here comes the ice path. And down goes XY, and down goes the tower as well with that. Dominating Kenji, tower dies, the first tower to go down, but they do trade it for their own tier 1. Fortification will delay the mid tower from dying, but I don't think it matters that much. PA with the last hit there, extra gold for Ice Ice Ice. 
G7 not backing off just yet. They have five heroes here pushing, while Zenith only has two heroes in the mid lane trying to push. So there should be a tower still going the way of G7 and still therefore making the towers even rather than just uh, getting their own one tower. Yeah, and it's a good tower to take down. It's quite nice just for additional map control. Ideally, they want to take, of course, the mid and the bottom tower, but the top tower is good as well, just because it makes farming the Ancients on the Radiant side a bit diff more difficult. And especially Venomancer is actually taking advantage of those. He's been farming Ancient stacks just by himself, just uh, stacking and uh, pulling them out with the wards. So. He's still the lowest level in the game, though, so I don't think it helped him all that much. He's level 8, but yeah. well, the lowest level upon G7 is level 10. Yeah, he's really not doing too well for himself because G7 they had a lot more aggressive movement. Walk Speaking shot. of which, bye Razor. Nice try. No. Poor poor guy. Yeah, that was an infested clockwork. He did just spend his money though for a Mithril Hammer, so he didn't lose too much. Yeah, that's good for and, him. And oh, Venom Manza even TP's out from the bot uh, from the top rune because he knows someone is coming. I don't blame him. I don't blame him one bit. But yeah, that is. Oh. I mean, that's a Mithril Hammer for Yay. Razor. Oh wow. By life, see that, that, was, that was a crit? Yeah, that was I think even two crits. That was insane amount of damage. Poor life the first hit was definitely a crit and he just bursted him down in half HP. Level 17 PA, we know that he is the highest level on the map, showing for it as well. Use his BKB though. Yeah he did. I'm not sure why though. I mean no, I guess he didn't want to get open wounded, but still. Yeah, this is one scary Phantom Assassin. She's been in six out of the seven kills, hasn't died yet. She's got the highest net worth by far, highest level by far. And G7, I mean, they've got Lifesteer that just melted under her hands. Yeah, and G <laughs> and Lifesteer is their most farmed hero, so yes. it's troublesome. But he's going to pick up an MKB fairly soon, so might be able to oh, to go. um. To what? Uh, to contest, uh, to fight properly against him. I was kind of sidetracked by the notice by um, music. Tier 1 tower goes in. down on the top lane, so that's uh, all tier 1 towers dead on G7, but Kenji is looking for a hook, looking for a way in. Don't think he'll be able to find one though, or is he? Hook shot? Nope, he's thinking uh, about it. The Kree wave kind of blocked him, otherwise, I think he would have gone for it. You know, Delta split from Zenith will uh, make it impossible for him to chase. And that's gonna be G7. I mean, they're losing their ground. They are slowly but steadily. I mean, they are ahead still in kills. But the gold graph going the way of Zenith, the experience graph going the way of Zenith. It already was always in the way of Zenith. But it's kind of going up now. And at the moment, there's no real straight way that G7 can come back to make everything even again because they don't really have an equivalent to the PA. They can't really deal they don't really have a way to deal with her. That's true, but if they do five five on uh, five versus fight, I think they have a fair shot because if you look on Zenith's side, all their XP and all their gold is kind of banked on the PA. If the PA falls, there's nothing left on Zenith's side. Um, I mean of course the Razor can steal damage and team fight with Doxy is always great. But just just speaking of gold or items and uh, experience, these two heroes are not really looking that great. Yep, PA has got a Manta style ready. Gonna be having a fight for Roshan soon, I think. Zenith uh, does have a ward here. Two, actually. Well, uh, one is about to disappear. But uh, Roshan is gonna be an important factor. For G7, they kinda need it on the life tier just to be allowing him to get uh, unlucky crits against him. Oh, Razor, once more. Yeah, open wounds. The semi pops a BKB. He's probably gonna look to TP out, but I'm not sure why he doesn't. He's actually buying time for the rest of the team. Relocate in. They go for the clockwork. BKB also turned on by Ice Ice Ice. There is a vacuum though into Dark Sea Wall, and it does tons of damage. That's gonna be the Razor still dead, but a clockwork goes down. Life Sealer goes down. Life Sealer buys back. Ice 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 stuck inside the wall, but still not really worried about dying. He gets a stun and gets another kill. Darkseer with the last hit there. Now they back out. The Wisp will go down, but Ice 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 will run himself out of this one. Or will he? It's a 4-4-3 four, four, tra four for 2 trade. And a buyback from the Lifesteer. They get in return for that as well. Zenith, I think for the first time really winning a 5-on-5 five five fight. 
Yeah, I agree. I full heartedly agree. That was a really good fight. And actually, at first, I was I had the same reaction you did. I was like, okay, Yamate, why are you not TPing out? But he just wasted so much time from Shoti. Yeah. Shoti had to chase him down and then still hit him. And in the meantime, PA just cleaned up his whole team. So, yeah, Clockwork. Um... I mean, that's a hero that should be having a lot of impact. He just... He got stuck in cogs with the PA. You don't want to have that. He probably wants to have a 4 stop right now. Actually, he has a 4 stop. What am I saying? Did he just get that? I think he even had it, but to be honest, the 4 stop against PA is not even that great because he can just blink after yeah, but you. So. Delayed. you can, he blinks in first and he yeah, 4 stop out. That's, that's true. At least that's you have true, a bit but... of a cooldown time. But then, yeah, you're right, not for that long and he'll just blink after you. Or blink after a more squishy target, whoever he thinks he can kill off fastest. Because that's, uh, that's just what he does. But with that fight, Zenith then... Uh, in the lead again, I think, in terms of setting the pace for this game, we're still gonna have G7 looking for pickoffs because that's what they mean. Five on five team fights are not for them anymore. Pickoffs are the ones that they should go for. And even then, as we just saw on the bottom lane, they have to be careful because one pickoff on the wrong target and a relocate and a PA are there, and then you know you're in trouble. Yeah, they really they really have to be careful. And um, the the sad thing is that Shoti had to buy back and. That kind of put him behind in terms of getting that MKB. I mean, he still has one Javelin now and is only 1.4k gold away, but ideally he would have had it by now. Yeah, and he's gonna try to and... get some extra gold with the infest. Oh, camera work. Yamate again, not tipping out. No, this time he couldn't though, but he, uh, yeah, he'll get cocked. He'll go down. In comes XY. Maybe they want to try and do something. They don't have a relocate, or at least they're not close enough to go for a relocate with the IO and the Wisp being in two different locations, but maybe they're gonna get Leo. Jump forward, Leo. For staff, BKB turned on. No Astro Imprisonment, and that will be uh, Leo. Should be dying, but he keeps him. Oh! Astro Imprisonment. Delaying the inevitable, I feel like. Yeah, he's just buying time for his team to TP in. But. Mm, yeah, they were a bit cogs. slow. On... Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, nice attempt to save his life, but it was uh, it was just not worth it. And in the end, both solo mids go down. I think that's more painful for G7 than it is for Zenith because they need those ex they need that extra carry on the side of uh, whoa. Oh, freedom! Oh, too bad. Freedom dies. I followed the wrong one. The tree was able to uh, to get home. He blinked himself away and TP'd himself out. Gem of Truesight dies, or gets picked up rather, because it can't die anymore. Venomans are dying, and that's a Gem of Truesight up on Shoti. Yeah, and this is actually really important for them to have, because Zenith has taken away a lot of um, map control from... Oh, XY, four steps himself out. But yeah, uh, Zenith has taken a lot of map control by just dewarding everything, and now it's... Well, yeah, G7's turn to just deward everything. Yeah, they just buy a new gem though. So oh, that's that's, uh, that's gonna be good for Zenith at least. Uh, well, they're not shy for money, I guess. Uh, one thing that I'm still waiting for is the Basher up on Ice Ice Ice. I mean, that's the one thing that you should be wanting to have for a life tier because I mean, is the the one disable that Zenith has is the Tether, and it won't hit up on the life tier if he's raged. So you need to have that Basher to just shut him down as well. And with the movement speed that you get from just uh, you know jumping after one after someone to Phantom Strike. You just get those bashes up real fast, but for now, not just having it yet. Goes for the Manta style first, completes it as well. Has now also got a Helm of the Dominator. It's still looking very strong, and I mean, so far, the th one thing that Ice has been doing is just, you know, killing off everybody but the Life Stealer first, and leaving Yamate to steal the attack damage from the Life Stealer while he just tries to run around doing nothing, basically, because he doesn't have any attack damage anymore. Rotation coming off from G7. They smoke up. Look for a gank on the bottom lane. Yeah, just quick note. I think the Helm of the Dem Dominator is actually a good pickup because last team fight he wasn't that sustainable actually. Um, and oh, this could be a bad decision by G7. Then again, oh, Grazer's not here, so yeah, XY should fall. Yeah, there we go. XY goes for the wall, vacuum there as well. Here comes a poison no fight. It's already gonna be ice with this BKB. Four stuff into safety for a little while, but he can't TP him out. It is Kenji that drops. XY still goes down. Overgrowth doesn't really work. And that is gonna be the Jakiro, probably dead. There we go. Can't really run. Looks like Kali at least ran, runs. Jakiro indeed dies. OD dies. Zenith. I mean, look at Ice's HP bar. It's like yeah, he wasn't in a fight to begin with. He is just leeching on those crits and those poor, poor supports. Yep. 
And Yamate even still coming in. I mean, they have a tier 1 tower they can still TP into. Offering them a lot of control. Lifesteater, of course, was the one that was able to get away. He has the gem. He has to be so careful, though. Yeah, and, and like he has the MKB down. now, but um, to be honest, he doesn't really get in range to actually get on ice. Because even if he gets in range, I think ice definitely wins the 1v1 fight, so... Yeah, and for now, I mean, ice has been constantly jumping into the to the clockwork, meaning he gets stuck in cogs, and that's actually good for ice, because he can just, you know, focus on taking on the clockwork, not worrying about a lifestealer bashing on him, because lifestealer can't get into the cogs. Yeah, exactly. And the poor, poor clockwork, even though he has a 4 staff, that's not going to save him. And the blade mail is nice as well, but doesn't do damage against the BKB, so... Ice is just happily dishing away on that poor, poor clockwork. Yep. And Zenith taking more and more control. We do have the Aegis in the hands of Razor. I mean, they're thinking, you know what, Ice 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 doesn't die anyway, so just, just give it to Yamate. He's already died eight times. We, you know, throw him a bone. But, uh, but yeah, good call. For sure. He's got his BKB, he's going for an Aghanims. I would like to see if he's still got a refresher up before the game ends. Yeah, 46% uh, win rate against BA4 Lifestealer. It is not one of his easiest opponents for sure. Yeah, it really isn't. And uh, I think Alliance has shown why they why PA against Lifestealer can be strong. And now Zenith just... Well, proves the, proves the point as well. Just so much damage coming on with like one or two crits. Yep. See, 2300 gold up on Ice Ice Ice. Is it finally gonna. Oh, it's gonna be Boots of Travel first. Okay. Boots of Travel and Phase Boots because he can. Yeah, just for the actual mobility. Yeah. Oh, on the illusion, the hook. Well, at least he hit the hook. 50 second cooldown is not too big of a waste, but. That's true. I mean, he got his hopes up all high and such, but. Fortunately for him, not getting it. We have got freedom with a. Vladimir suffering, so helps his team even with that as well. And the extra armor helping out. And all overall, I mean, there is now 10k gold in favor of Zenith. 13, almost 14k gold in favor of, or experience rather, in favor of Zenith. And that's gonna be Clockwork forcing himself into safety. Cogs trying to help out. In comes an ice path. Ice just jumps over it and goes for the Jakiro. Nice ghost scepter. Keeps himself up looking for the next target. And goes back to the Clockwork. Nice living armor. Treant keeps himself safe, and this is just the position this game is in. Phantom Assassin, inside the Dire Jungle, finds three different targets and therefore knows that probably the entire G7 team is around there, but he is still looking for those pickoffs. Yeah, because he can, because there's nothing to stop him. Um, I think they saw the life shield on the bottom lane, so basically the only threat, even if he was one, is not here, so just jump on them. And he did force out, well, he did force all of them back. They had to rotate back into the base, yep. so really scared of that PA. Nah, I don't blame them. Ghost Scepter, good pickup though for VR Cat, will help him uh, stay alive longer in these fights. Which is just everybody to go for a Ghost Scepter. We have Leo going for a side of the Vice still. He actually has enough gold to pick his uh, up his Mystic Staff. He still has brown boots, by the way. Yeah, he's, he really needed all those other items because oh, of the shot. intelligence. XY gets himself out of the cogs already though, and surges himself away. He's fine. Four Staff up on the Darks here. Gets himself out. Also, of course, gets his teammates out of the, if he wants to. The tier 2 gets protected. Still have two tier 1s standing on the side of Zenith, by the way. G7 not able to, to get those towers while they have the advantage. Yeah, Zenith is really doing a good job at keeping the pressure up. Um, they're not really giving G7 too much time or space to farm. Um, they're just occupying the whole map, the enemy jungle. Keeping the vision up, keeping the map control up, and um, looking at G7, they're just playing really scared because they don't have too much vision over the enemies, and they're just farming as three or four people. This must be the one of the faster PAs I've ever seen, with the phase boots effect and the boots of travel. Yeah, bottom. but eventually he'll sa sell those phase boots yeah. for in oh. another damage item. Abyssal. And there's yeah, there's a basher. Yeah. Abyssal, uh, abyssal to come soon. Abyssal. Abyssal, abyssal. abyssal blade. It's good. Bleed. Sorry. Yes, Ice Ice Ice, no surprise that he's gonna go for that. He already sold his face boost right now, so Courier will fly. And Ogato will deliver that basher in good health. I wish him well on his journey. What's what what's that bird's name by the way? El Bird. <laughs> El Bird. Oh, oh sorry, Alberto, apparently. Oh really? Oh, that's 
<laughs> That's kind of lame. Sorry, no, he doesn't have a name. Ah, uh, you just... Aw, uh, that troll. <clears throat> Sorry. So, Ice gets himself an Ogre Club. More survivability. I mean, he is just basically the slave of Ice Ice Ice. He's been doing a good job, though. He's died a lot for his uh, carry. And his carry actually hasn't died a single time yet, so so far it's been worth it. Yeah, six to zero to eight. This is uh, I mean, this PA has been farming safely for a long time, on the bottom lane. Nobody coming in to to do anything. And still, she has an involvement rate that is very high. She has been in 14 out of the 15 kills. Can I count this properly? Am I counting this properly? Yeah, you counted properly. That's correct. that's insane. That's really it. Really is uh, for Carrie to be that much involved, and uh, it just goes to show that Ice is really the one that literally carrying this team um, and they're really reliant on him and currently not sure how G7 can approach them if they don't pick him off solo by himself Yeah, and because as you mentioned cool. yeah Zenith have a lot of heroes to back him up like, especially the Wisp just giving him all the region and of course Darks here has the mech as well so yeah we've got we've got the uh, the, the IO with the overcharge as well, we've got the Vlads up on the Venomancer, we've got the Static Link from Razor making sure that nobody damages Ice too much. Oh, he turns on his BKB, he's gonna go for this, he's gonna go for a Leo first, as from Prisman will keep him safe inside the cogs once again with Kenji. This time he jumps himself out in time, again, there goes Treyon, still dead. OD drops his ult, he doesn't really do that much though, and it is G7 that is dropping here, nice Poison Nova coming out of the Venomancer as well, have to commend him for that, and that's a team wipe. Ultra kill for Yamate. He was on 184 before this fight. He is on 584 right now. He totally made up for his death. Team wipe. Nobody died. I think Ice is quite sad that he didn't get any of those kills because he didn't get any of those kills, like not even one. But uh, that's yeah. a good fight for Zenith and a bit of a, of course, bad fight for G7. And they will lose their racks because of it. Maybe even lose their bottom tier three as well as Ice. Ice Ice is uh, pushing that one on the bottom lane. I should really count himself lucky though. He almost died, in fact. He was really low at some point. Uh, he was reluctant to use his Manti style. Oh, well. He still had. Or it, uh, it wasn't cooldown. The ages, of course. No, Yamate actually had the ages. Wow, they, that gave yeah, him Yamate a boost of confidence, I think. Yeah, I think so too. Um, again, Ice, 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 he was really close to dying. And um, if it hadn't been for Yamate, that could have been a horrible fight. But Yamate, of course. Um, his team did buy him enough time to be actually really strong, and this will be an easy, easy GG, I think, now. Yeah, they just leave the top lane open, they have to steal the tier 2 to take down, and they don't want to. Rather go for tier 4s. Let's see if they can find some more kills. Living Armor trying to help out Leo again. Leo, who tries to, to do something, at least pull the quick wave back. Get the nice ice path here, by the way, from Jakiro, but... Zenith, they're hanging around. They know they can take this fight. Wow. Are they gonna go for this? Yes, Ice turns on his BKB. Question is, is he gonna jump forward? Not yet. Everybody is trying to do something. All tier 4s are now down. And Zenith actually gets forced away from the base. We have a refresher up on the Razor still though. And if we meet their freedom, we'll end up uh, going down. That's one dead on the side of Zenith. Let's see if G7 can take down another one. Leo turned into a piglet, tries to stay alive. Probably won't be able to. Ice jumping himself forward, goes to VR Cat. Nice ice path from him, dual breath as well, but one crit up on a clockwork and a couple of hits. That's all that it takes. Io with the credit for the kill. OD dies still in the end to the darks here. There goes the double kill for XY, takes down the Jakiro, and that is gonna be the end of it because Lifesteer dies as well, and that's a team wipe, and still only one death on the side of Zenith, and that's gonna mean that Zenith will move on to the quarterfinals, while G7 has to say goodbye to Season 2 of the AMD Premier League, because they did not make it out of the round of 16. It was still a valiant performance by G7, at least in the second game, I think. Um, they did have their time of the game, where they were actually playing quite well for themselves, nice rotation coming out from certain heroes, especially the Clockwork, I think. But overall, just Zenith playing a lot safer and a lot more convincing and uh, playing out the experience they have, I guess, because farming up and banking everything on Ice Ice, knowing that they can come back from this. And they did. They did. Good start for G7, though. They definitely showed some potential. But um, Zenith keeps being Zenith, so they were able to take it back, win the game, form up their Phantom Assassin, and uh, that will mark the ending of today's broadcast, at least for the NDA Premier League, because we're going to see the Corsair Gaming Summer Tournament uh, right now. So stick around for that one. 
And tomorrow at 1400 p.m. we'll be back with the quarterfinals. At that time, there won't be any overlapping games anymore, by the way. So that's uh, something that you might be happy to note. No more choosing games. Of course, uh, with me was uh, Music, who were providing you with stats during the game. You can follow him on Twitter, at MusicStats. My co-caster, Skim, at SkimGaming. And I am Shiver. You can follow me on, at SheverGaming on Twitter. Skim, do you have any shoutouts and extra plugins, perhaps? Uh, no, that's actually it. That was, yeah, Twitter, Skim Gaming, and Twitch, Skim Gaming. Okay. Well, then we're going to jump ourselves out of this game, and we are going to start looking for Virtus Pro versus Dignitas, because that will be our next matchup. Stick around. <laughs>